Well, welcome to day eight, the classic roundup, third day of selling. We've seen some highlights once again with me on the panel today. We've got Simon Dodwell. How are you, Doddy? Good, thanks, Brad. Joel Fleming, daycare member from Tamworth. Well, <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Joel. <laughs> it's good to be here, brother. Now, <laughs> now, let's try and recap last night with the Stallion shootout. We've run and won the Dalgetty shootout. John Lee held the cards coming in, 179. Then he put a 23 yard with it to come out on top. How good's that for a local competitor, Joel, to come to this with the big guns? Everyone was here, Terry Hall, the whole lot, and for John to to, to be up there in amongst it with them people. Yeah, it's unreal. Like Johnny's just a he's a he's a solid campaigner. Like what he's he's always up there. I, I wouldn't say that he wins as many as those big fellas, but he probably doesn't go. He doesn't go to as many either. But for him to for him to get up there and mix it mix it with the big boys, it's good. Like he's a novice he's a novice stallion. That's a that's a, a very good stallion. Um, won a title on him and everything. But it was and it'll it's it's been real good for Johnny. Not only that, it, now he's an open horse, that, that turns him into a, to an open competition horse, but he didn't just take the win, you know, easy. Like, he, he stepped up and he, he put a bit of acid on and stayed in there for a good few turns. So, yeah, he, he kept the pressure on right to the finish. Well, 90 and 89 and a 23, look, it's, it's, that's, that's, as good a, that's as good as any of the horses, isn't it? That's oh, it's just an, average, just an average maiden win for you. <laughs> That's if I could win a maiden. <laughs> Righto. Now, what about the atmosphere last night? Like, where were you, Dotty, when the stallion final was on? Well, you're obviously in it, but... I was sort of sitting down there amongst them, Brett, and, yeah, the atmosphere is just unbelievable. Like, a deafenger. It's unreal. And, for, like you said, for John to come out against all them cutting horses and hold his nerve to get his 23s was pretty unbelievable. I think he didn't breathe until he left the front of the camp. Because there were there were some horses that were breathing down his neck that you know could go out there and run 25 yard like Absolutely. Thorny or Little Turbulence horses like that. So he he didn't you know he had a lot of pressure behind him. Yeah no. Now for those stallions to showcase what they do, what a great great arena to do it in. I don't think we see a crowd like that with any stallion draft around the country. That the people come and they can be so intense over the top watching what they do. How good is that for, that for those horses to come out and sell today? Well, I just think the atmosphere it creates and to like show your horses, to sell horses here over the sale over the four days, it's just, where else do we do it? And it brings the quarter horses, the stock horses together. And I think there was once the stock horses, quarter horses, now they're all bonding together. And it just shows them, like, for the stock horse to come out and win that cut out last night against those great cutting horses, like, you know, like you said, Little Turbulence and um, the two Huey were riding. Like, it was pretty special, and, and that's how that has brought the two breeds of horses together, I reckon. I just think it's it's to go. And yeah, well, we, we had a, the breaking news yesterday with the syndicate of the Stallion Metallic Storm. We got some other breaking news here today, and and Doddy, you're you're involved in this, and what a sad day it's going to be. But you have told us that the Willinga draft this year, a couple of months away, will be Excel's last major camp draft. Yeah, Brady. Look, we brought the horse out of horse deals as a three-year-old. He's been unbelievable to our family. Um, he's getting buggered in legs. He's got a few leg issues. He's done a million miles. We've all rode him. And I just, instead of going through and your horse starts pulling up short, cheating, which he's starting to do a little bit of, instead of making the horse look ordinary, retire him on a good note, hopefully for $100,000 in his pocket. Um, but yeah, when we just decided this year that was it for him and we're happy to retire him and we've got some nice mares coming up by him and you know, and he's like every other stand, there's people that like him and there's people that hate him. And it's the same with any people who breed horses. We like some, we hate some, and that's the nature. Some people like you, Brett, some people hate you. Well, that, that is you true. Want to, um, want to do a vote on the panel? 
No, it'll be unanimously the wrong <laughs> way. So, so Joel, I'd just, I'd just like to put your foot in the collar there. But, <laughs> but XL, we've, we've seen some highlights in the sales success with the, the year that Calico sold and was a top prize open age mare. It must have been a big thrill to not only ride and prepare that horse, but, but for XL to go on and, and see those highs in the sale ring. Well, it's just another you know, highlight of the sale. We brought her out of the sale for 10 grand, and we, we only brought, we've only ever brought three classic horses. Two of them weren't much of a success. In the earlier days in Calico, we just thought, well, if we're gonna have one, we might promote our own stallion. And yeah, we brought her out here for 10 grand. We'd done the classic with her. And um, we just decided we, you know, little kids and that, we need to get a few things done at home. And we just decided, well, she's the best we got, so she's going through. And we, I saw I had a bit of an inkling that she'd, yeah, make good money. She was a pretty good mare. She, um, yeah, we thought she'd make good money, but I didn't think she'd make that much money. Um, Simon, year on year, you, you turn up to Tamworth with a, with a crew of backyard workers bring the cattle in, take the cattle out, you're there with the camp drafts on, with Lockie Maxwell and Ian Laurie and, and all those those people, they're really the unsung heroes. It's all well and good for the auctioneers to have the ties on and the white shirts and do all the squawking out the front, but it's a, the guys that are behind the, the behind the scenes that they keep it rolling, like keeping the cattle up to the sale ring and all, like for the camp draft and everything else, a lot of you do that out of your goodness of your own heart. Um, what an outstanding thing to do for the for the team here to, and all the vendors. You know, I'm sure they do appreciate it. Yeah, look, it was one of those things, Brett. I was here one year and sitting around, and I don't like sitting up there and watching the whole sale. My wife loves it. Um, and Bader was a bit stuck for people here one year to help him, and I said, oh, I'd love to help you. I'm just bored. So. And it's just carried on from there and Ian and Mel have come on a few years later and we're very lucky we got Mel to keep us in line and um, yeah no, it's a pleasure to help and we have a bit of fun and joking out the back especially when Ian Laurie now he got bucked off today that was a bit hilarious <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah no we just do it because we enjoy doing it and I like you know it's just good to help and yeah you know, make you blokes look better because I'm out there. No all good well we have got a bit of Crayon work on the paper there. So, Joe, you better run us through the, the top sale lot from today. <laughs> I'll give you crayon work. <laughs> so, the um, the three-year-olds have taken out all basically all sections today. Um, the three-year-old girling topped at twenty-six thousand. Uh, three-year-old man topped at sixty thousand, and a three-year-old Colt, uh, Colt has had the top seller today at seventy-five thousand, and it was. By con man and out of um, out of Shakira, who was also Shakira was purchased through this sale. Um, or, or I wouldn't know how many years ago now, but purchased for about forty thousand, I think. Come back and come back and won the Masters, um, and now she's having progeny go through here that'll make a fair bit of money. The, the sale tomorrow, we go from five hundred and twenty-one to six hundred and forty-three. We how don't many, expect anything different. How many lots is that? Oh, just off the top of my head, Joel. <laughs> You're at the daycare centre, just, just scribble a bit down. So, from 521 to 643, the, the quality doesn't drop day in, day out. It's, it's no different. There's horses with top pedigrees, top performance right to the end of the sale. So, it's still plenty of time to uh, come and grab the horse you want to come back and win the classic for next year. Yeah, for sure. The whole the whole catalogue these days, like you got so you got your open ages and then you got three, you know, you got three days of classic eligible horses. And each year it picks up because people are people are working out what what's selling, what's not, what's performing, what's not, and they're adjusting their breeding programs to suit this sale. So year on year, the breeding picks up, the performance picks up. Like it's, yeah, pe people that are just, it's its the vendors that have lifted, it's not us, it's the vendors that have lifted this sale. Do you think the, um, just the people have learnt, haven't they, to train their horses better and just you bring can't. good horses and it's just <coughs> turned it all into a... You yeah, just can't bring competition to bring the best horse. Well, you can't bring green. You bring green, you know, green horses here, that, that, that's one thing, but if you go in, 
if you go in after the top 10%, it's the luck of the draw. If you go in after one of the, one of them blokes that's at the top in the top 10% and got one of those horses, well, your you know your horse looks greener than what it is because it's going in against a horse the same age that's doing twice as much. So people people have just learnt that along the way. Back in the day when the old Tamil Showground the first cattle with 128 horses, for the first few years, you could do that. Yep. You could break him in and, and have a couple of weeks under his belt, canter him around and make 10 or 15,000. Those days are long gone. The Yahoo Brett Welsh days are out. They're, They're just not even anywhere within Kiwi. Joel. Yeah, well you've learned the hard way, so... Haven't I what? <laughs> Get out of bed a bit earlier. Um, Simon, thank you so much for being here with us today and, and we wish you all the best with, with Excel in his retirement. Um, we, we all hope that, you know, the big, big check at Willinga is a great way to, to send him off. Joel, thanks for nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't believe they gave me this job. <laughs> It was so much better with Terence up the end. But no, Joel, thanks for coming on. And um, yeah, good luck with the rest of the sale. And yeah, great job. Thank you. If there's any finalists out there that haven't got a cap, we've got three of them here and none of us are in the final. So. Yeah, we actually got four. We're, and we probably won't give them back. <laughs> Thank you.